that's good. The glasses actually have this kind of infinity of, of images. Kind of weird. All righty. Um, supplemental. Supplemental video. Did log, podcast, experiment. Uh, this is, once again, another podcast on the 5th of August, 2024, for um, Westsylvania, uh, which is located at Locals. And this was a pet peeve on international issues for the use or misuse of language. And it's usually done, I think, I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt and say it's done unconsciously or because they don't simply understand. They're not versed in this. That being said, some of the people I, ta I know that use this are extraordinarily well-educated and intelligent. So maybe they're just doing it because they didn't read this particular part of the book. I don't know. And the word is, because there's a group of people out there now, as we look at, that was like super irritating to hit the camera on my laptop. There's a group of people out there now from all different walks of life, uh, from intelligentsia to labor, from uh, men and women, from um, classical liberal to libertarian. And they're coming up with this idea that, you know what? Four years under Donald Trump, when we had peace and prosperity, those were damn good things. Peace and prosperity is awesome. And now we have the deep state in charge again through their puppet, or puppets, I guess now that Kamala has been anointed, democratic process, the primaries thrown out, and uh, Her Highness Kamala has been anointed, much to uh, Lady Dr. Macbeth um, chagrin. So... Apparently, she wasn't quite as good as her Shakespearean rival or namesake. But what people will do, uh, hopefully unconsciously, if not, then they're being purposely disingenuous. And they may be super clever, but there's plenty of people out there that are clever, too, that remember stuff. The word they'll use in foreign policy, and that lead-up was probably way too long for this, they'll say, oh... You like peace and prosperity. Now you're saying no intervention into foreign wars. You're an isolationist. Like, okay, how did you skip over the non-interventionist part? I don't want to in intervene in foreign wars, and now I'm an isolationist? Wouldn't that make me a non-interventionist? Well, no, 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 because isolationism is wrong. It's right here on that three by five card of public opinion that, that uh, Tom Woods is so busy, you know, filing and then burning. So the, uh, I mean, I guess he pretty much files it in a fire pit. Three by five index card of allowable opinion. So thank you, Tom Woods, for that. We can even add uh, uh, Javier Millet to that, and we take the three by five card and when we throw it in the fire, we could yell, "Afuera, afuera." So. Um, that's really a great video from Javier Millet. That was awesome. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't ever see that, Javier Millet, the current leader of Argentina, and then look up Afuera and his uh, gutting of the Argentinian government, which he has largely done. Hooray for him! Good man. Uh, so anyway, um, we well, have. And, and this is really is kind of a pet peeve because I'm now trying to not mess with the camera and make it vibrate like it just did twice. The um, idea of isolationism is repugnant to most people. We don't want to cut ourselves off from the world. But much like Washington and Jefferson, who were not really ideologically that close, they both said the same things in their farewell addresses. Have entangling alliances with none. Free trade with all, entangling alliances with none. If you were actually an isolationist, you wouldn't have free trade with all. You wouldn't have trade. You would be isolationist, like um, like um, the shoguns of Japan or you know or Meiji Japan when when it was opened up by Admiral Perry. I mean, you would you would have I mean, you would have an isolationist country, which is terrible. It's not healthy. It's very it's not very useful. It makes you weak makes you susceptible to attack, it's not good. But the converse of that, too, is to be in everyone's little business. This freaking Yankee imperialism that is, uh, and I don't mean Yankee in the sense that the communists used it, I mean Yankee in the sense that Calhoun and other people used it, which is this group of people, generally part of the ineffectual 
The East Coast ineffectual effete, sometimes they call themselves the East Coast intellectual elite, but we know they're the ineffectual effete. And they're just absolute mania with involving themselves in your business, in your state's business, in a foreign country's business. They just can't help themselves. It's, it's, it's like a pathology. Yankeeism is, is a plague upon anyone who seeks peace and prosperity. So, you know, we, you know, we have 825,000 dead Americans to prove that. So your correct usage of the term for people who like peace and prosperity and do not want to go over and fight foreign wars is a non-interventionist, not an isolationist. I, I, I was very kind at the beginning of the video. I know a lot of the people out there that use the word isolationist know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to make sure they keep the deep state running, or at least they're part of it. They're trying to make sure that they have um, their little hobby horses or irons in the fire, whatever metaphor you want to use. They're doing that to, make, to feather their own bed. But I, I really don't care about them. I care about the working, I care about the people that built this country, not the people who are profiting from it. Uh, you know, the people who are rent seeking and uh, financiers and people who think of all these different um, scams and tricks and, and uh, other uh, ways to manipulate the banking and the markets. Uh, you know, I honestly don't care if you can't buy a new Lamborghini this year or that you have to give up two or three of your mistresses. Do not care. Um, but as a non-interventionist, this does not mean that I'm not involved in foreign politics. A non-interventionist means that I personally would not be too concerned that the most corrupt nation in Europe is being attacked by the second most corrupt nation in Europe. Any more than I care if the Columbos and the Gambinos are fighting. I just don't care. And they'll sort it out. They always have. The Kievan Rus and the uh, Moscow... Moscova, uh, um, Varangians have fought and done this pissing match for a thousand years. You know, it's just, it's just who they are. And now we're going to get involved in it and fix it. Or we're just going to make it more bloody, which is what we do all the time. Which will be another future podcast about how America's involvement in World War I basically guaranteed the rise of Hitler and fascism and communism and all the other stuff because we overthrew stable systems and not hyper-efficient systems, stable systems. And we tried to monkey around and yankify them and we wound up with more bloodshed than we could ever count. But anyway, back to this. The um, willingness to defend certain fights should be done on an individual level. The government of America, one of the best examples, when Israel declared their um, establishment ahead of the UN declaration, they, they jumped the gun on it. They declared themselves to be a Jewish state called Israel. Okay. Then America sent divisions and of troops over and arm. No, America didn't send anyone over in official capacity or in unofficial capacity. But Americans went to Israel and fought. They thought because Israel, the establishment of the return of the Jews to the homeland, especially after the show of the Holocaust, that this was a good thing. And they voted on that, not by voting for congressmen who would send troops to Israel. They got on ships or on planes and flew or sailed to Israel and fought. There's actually a group in Israel to this day that does that. They're made up of American volunteers, usually non-Jews. I think they're all non-Jews, actually, I think. It's called Mahal. It's still active. Mahal, foreign volunteers for Israel. It's not predominantly, I mean, it's not, ex not exclusively Americans. It does tend to have a high percentage of Americans in it. And the first aloof general of Israel in the modern times is a guy called Mickey Marcus, who was an American. And I, I believe he was a secular Jew. I mean, from what I've been able to uh, understand of Mickey Mar if there's 
that or if anything I say, uh, you have some counterfactual information that, just leave it in the comments below so I can research it and look it up. I certainly am, I gotta keep this going here. I'm right a lot, I'm not right all the time. I make mistakes. Um, but Mickey Marcus, the first Aluf general of the uh, Israeli Defense Forces, before it was an IDF, he actually fought when they were still a bunch of disparate units that were uh, just kind of coming together uh, that had been doing independent things before the uh, uh, 1948 declaration. They'd been doing their own little resistance movements, and they all kind of came together, and Mickey Marcus was their uh, general. Uh, an American. Americans to this day fight in uh, Mahal. And if you're an older fellow or you're not, you want to do like more like Red Cross type stuff, they have Sadel. Sadel. So Sadel is for like non combatant volunteers for Israel. I'm fully in favor of that. I'm not in favor of, and people go, well, surely if you're a supporter of Israel, which I am, I'm a Zionist, you must support the American government giving money to Israel. No, I'm not. And it's because I can read. For every dollar that this American government has given to Israel, we have given nine dollars to their enemy, to Israel's enemies. One dollar for Israel, nine dollars to her enemies. So I don't think we should give nine dollars to Israel's enemies, and we should quit giving a dollar to Israel for foreign aid. We have plenty of things here in America that need uh, attended to. Now, if I or anyone else wants to go over and work with Sadel or Mahal, great. That's good. I think that's a wonderful thing. I would I would sponsor someone now that I'm of a more advanced age. I think that's a great thing. If somebody wanted to um, go to Taiwan, it's like, trust me, this is like trying to train beagles, though. The Orientals have a very fixed way of doing things and don't like being messed with in their way of doing things. Taiwan could turn itself into the Switzerland of the Pacific and laugh at China. But right now, they're not doing that. They're not handing out rifles and machine guns and pistols to their members, to their citizens. They're just not. They have them training with airsoft guns and things like that. Now, Taiwan's still a tough nut to crack. It'll be a lot easier for China to destroy Taiwan than control it. I don't know if they'll ever be able to control it. They certainly could destroy it. So, you know, but if somebody wanted to go to Taiwan and fight, I had a Taiwanese girlfriend when I was living in California. Um, had her, had this been going on at that time, and we were fairly serious. Uh, it didn't work out. But when it was looked like it was working out, if her parents had called from Taiwan and said that they needed help and there was, you know, they wanted people with military experience or whatever, I would have gone over. I mean, you know, I'm of a generation that thinks that Captain America is not a parody of something. But the idea that America, if it stands for anything on the international market, should stand for an international playing ground. I guess not market. An international playing ground. We should stand for protecting those that can't protect themselves. Standing up for the little guy. Being willing to get in the fight to make sure the bully doesn't win. Now, are our leaders in Washington smart enough to make any of that chain of decisions? No, they are not. But you can do it. I can do it. I can look at Ukraine. And, you know, if people were Ukrainian descent that lived here, they went, well, that's crazy. I'm going to go help Ukraine. You should. If there are people here of Russian descent that said, I'm going to go over and help, you know, Grodinia to fight against, you know, the, the Ukrainians. I don't think it was right that they killed 12,000 Russians in the last eight years in western Ukraine. Okay, good for you. Go fight. You know, if I had a Russian wife, maybe I'd do that. If I had a Ukrainian wife, I don't know if I'd go fight or not. You know, I have a hard time with a guy who's a comedian that has become a billionaire while he has become president of Ukraine. I think it's vastly corrupt. Not that Putin's a winner. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I would, I, I'm glad they don't have any relatives on either side of that fight. It's a mess. Taiwan, I understand it. I think Taiwan needs to be protected. Taiwan should learn to stay on its own two feet. And if Taiwan did the right thing, it would need no help. But testadura in Italian, they're hardheads. Uh, Orientals are like not. They may well be occupied before they would be willing to give their citizens guns. Now, when it comes to something like Israel, 
that's a little bit easier for me. It's a religious um, obligation, I feel. Also, I've always felt that uh, when 1% of a geographic area is being beaten up on by 99% of the geographic area, that those guys have a lot of, well, they got a lot of chutzpah, to put it in Yiddish, and they, they deserve respect. And, you know, I, I, I'd be willing to stand up for the only democracy in the Mideast that um, enjoys some type of uh, values of Western civilization. So, um, once again, we're going to get that flare here. Let's see if I can back up a little bit and do the flare. Probably didn't do it. For some reason, my screen's... I'm going to have to get an independent light source, I think. Anyway, that's 15 minutes. Um, the upshot is, once again, to recap, non-interventionism, good thing. Isolationism, bad thing. Confusing the two, probably a tricksy thing. Don't be tricksy. Be smart. Do the good thing. All right. Well, last one for tonight. So until tomorrow, adios amigos and vaya con Dios. You know, another good one would be Vivo Cristo Rey. I like that. And then one day we'll talk about the Cristada. <laughs>